From the opinion pages of the Wall Street Journal, this is Potomac Watch. Donald Trump's latest economic policy idea is a promise to end taxes on overtime pay. But how would that work? How much thought has Trump given it? And is this one more example of the difficulty of projecting the economic outcomes from the winner of the 2024 election? Welcome. I'm Kyle Peterson with The Wall Street Journal. We are joined today by my colleagues, columnists Kim Strassel and Alicia Finley. Eclectic might be one word to describe Trump's economic policy agenda for a second term, including his proposal for 10 percent across the board tariffs on all imports to the United States, tax free tips, and now his latest plan to exempt overtime pay from taxes. Let's listen to Trump announcing that pledge at a rally recently in Arizona. I'm also announcing that as part of our additional tax cuts, we will end all taxes on overtime. That gives people more of an incentive to work. It gives the companies a lot. It's a lot easier to get the people. And, you know, I went to some economists, great ones, and I said, what do you think? They said, it would be unbelievable. You'll get a whole new workforce by doing that. No taxes on overtime. The people who work overtime are among the hardest working citizens in our country. And for too long, no one in Washington has been looking out for them. Those are the people. They really work. And here is vice presidential nominee J.D. Vance on Face the Nation going into more detail about this no tax on overtime idea. We're talking about hourly workers. And of course, when you work overtime in this country beyond 40 hours, you get time and a half. And the president's saying, if you're one of those select hard workers that's really busting your rear end to try to make good in Kamala Harris's economy, uh, then you should get a tax cut. And I think it fits fully, Margaret, with his entire tax agenda, which is we want American workers to get tax cuts under President Trump's policies. And we want to actually penalize companies that are shipping jobs overseas through tariffs. And Kamala Harris's tax policies are, in fact, the version of that. She wants to raise taxes on American workers and actually reward companies for shipping jobs overseas. So it is a really stark contrast between the agenda of Donald Trump and of Kamala Harris. Kim, what do you make of this idea? And are Republicans likely to take this up in a second Trump term? (laughs) Well, it's a dreadful idea. And by the way, it's now official. Apparently, the Republican nominee is going to go about buying votes the way that traditionally Democrats go about buying votes. He's choosing different voting groups that he'd like to see vote for him and then offering a perk for them. And again, we do have one party that tends to do that. But the entire basis of smart free market economics, which Republicans have subscribed to since the Reagan era, is a broad based tax policy that benefits the most people that does not slice them and dice them is most beneficial for the economy that raises all boats. That's the idea. The reason that you don't want to pick and choose tax policy is because let's look through the consequences of this. I mean, the first one is going to be enormous cost. All right. I actually have friends and family who work in hourly jobs. And yeah, sometimes you get time and a half if you're working more than eight hours a day or 40 hours a week. Sometimes you get double time if you are required to work on what would be otherwise called a day of rest. And that adds up to a lot of money. That's why people do it. But that is going to be an enormous hit to the federal fisc and is going to require Republicans to make other trade offs. It's going to make it harder for them to do that kind of broad based cutting that would be better for all and help all workers out there. And again, by the way, why shouldn't a small business owner get a tax cut? Why shouldn't someone who doesn't work in a union and works for a business get a tax cut as well, too. Why only people who are in that particular sector of the economy? And that gets, I think, to the other thing, which is the incentives. I mean, Donald Trump is talking about, oh, you're going to get all these workers. You're going to drive more people to join unions. And not necessarily because those unions are going to benefit them, but just because they're interested in locking in that time and a half or double time. And this goes very much against the Republican Party that has worked hard to get right to work in different states to give workers a choice about joining or not. This is giving a whip hand to the other side that likes to force people into unions and then strip them of their dues and use them for political causes. So this isn't very well thought out to me. It's pure J.D. Vance and the whole working man pay 
hitch that he has brought to this race. So it's a bad, another economic idea. And you can add it to the list of some of the others you put up there at the top, Kyle. To provide a bit of context, the Tax Foundation has done an analysis, says that their estimate for the lower bound reduction in revenue for exempting overtime from individual income taxes is almost $700 billion over 10 years. And then if you add on top of that an exemption from payroll taxes, because overtime pay employees' wages are subject to a 6.2% Social Security tax and a 1.45% Medicare tax, if you add that in, then the reduction in tax revenue is more like $1.1 trillion over 10 years. Another thought I would add is that we are already in a situation where the Social Security's trust fund is running out of money. Those IOUs are running out, and the trustees are warning that by 2033, there will be a 21% mandatory cut in benefits coming down for Social Security beneficiaries and reducing the payroll tax that is flowing into the pot there would only make that problem worse. I also worry, Alicia, about the kind of distortions that it introduces into the economy. It gives employees a reason to prefer to be hourly instead of salaried. It gives companies a huge incentive to shift new hires into hourly positions, even if previously they had been salaried positioned. And as far as Trump's overall agenda, it seems to me that he's backing himself into a corner with some of these promises because the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, the 2017 Trump tax cuts that President Trump is proud of and brags about and says is responsible for the roaring economy of the Trump era is a lot of those changes are going to expire here in 2025. And when push comes to shove in that kind of negotiation, Alicia, is he going to prefer the kinds of promises he is now making in 2024, tax cuts on tips, tax cuts on overtime pay, and then the overall rates might end up going up, which is the exact opposite of the kind of tax reform that he executed successfully and that economists say is really what's good for the economy. Well, I think you have to go back and look at what they did in 2017, right? And that was eliminate all kinds of carve outs and loopholes. And recall that did include capping the state and local tax deduction, which was incredibly expensive. But there were all kinds of other deductions. They eliminated some kinds of exemptions, increased the standard deduction. Uh, and it, the goal was to flatten out the code, make it more neutral for workers while reducing the marginal rates. And by and large, it was successful. What Donald Trump is now proposing to do is the exact opposite by introducing all kinds of other carve outs. You mentioned the tips, the Social Security. Now he's proposing overtime and who knows what else. By the time we're in November, it seems to be that he's floating ideas. He hasn't actually fully fleshed these out. So it's unclear whether the the exemption from income tax, as you said, would be just for income tax or could also be for payroll tax. It's unclear if it would be uh, under federal law. Overtime is paid on uh, 40 hours or more. But sometimes, as Kim mentioned, there are collective bargaining agreements for to require the employers to pay on more than, say, 35 hours. And now states, for instance, some are looking at reducing their hourly work week. California has proposed a 32 hour our work week. And if that were enacted, would employers have to pay overtime a time and a half on over 32 hours? And then would uh, that become tax free? So there are all kinds of complications that Donald Trump clearly hasn't thought out. And obviously, J.D. Vance is the one who's whispering all this in his ear. I don't think he's considered all these policy contortions and distortions. And you mentioned earlier, well, would it encourage Employers to reclassify workers as wage rather than salary, of course. And bankers would love to get paid when they work beyond 40 hours a week. Many work more than 80 and be paid on a wage basis and then get more than half their pay tax free. This would encourage that reclassification across the uh, entire economy. And, and the, the irony, of course, is that this is essentially what the Biden administration has been trying to do um, at the Labor Department, has been pushing this overtime rule that would allow and, and push more employers to have to pay workers, even if they are, quote unquote, salaried overtime, and to kind of shift to more uh, uh, a reclassification from salary to wage earners. 